Man, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of EOS. It's 1090 Jake, man. I'm rocking with y'all. Y'all rocking with me. And for this video, we're going to be speaking on the rise and fall of Miami rapper Wavy Navy Pooh. Friday, January 14th, 2022. The sound of automatic gunfire followed by the blast of a rifle were captured by a vehicle's dash cam, and the Miami suburb of Kendall was left shaken. It was 5.30 in the afternoon when Miami-Dade police received calls for shots fired at the intersection of 127th Ave and 152nd Street. This was across from the entrance of Zoo Miami. A man, woman, and two children aged one and five was sitting in a Toyota Camry at the red light when a gray Lexus pulled up on the driver's side. They'd unleash a barrage of bullets, leaving over 80 shell casings at the scene and was being described as an ambush. In the front passenger seat sat the one-year-old boy whose birthday was being celebrated. Whether it was luck or the grace of God, not one bullet struck the boy or his car seat as the driver's body shielded him. The driver was pronounced dead at the scene and identified as 27-year-old Chandler Boobin, who's more commonly known as the Miami rapper Wavy Navy Pooh. Wavy was from Brown Sub. The nickname given to the Brownsville neighborhood of Miami that's notoriously remained one of the poorest and deadliest. In an interview with Dirty Glove Bastard, he describes the city as crabs in a bucket and plagued by murder. Hence the mixtape murder is a major issue which shows pictures of 17 dead friends. Jumping off the porch at 17 years old, he credited football for keeping him out the streets and he'd even receive a scholarship to North Dakota, but he was unimpressed by the offer and chose the streets of Miami instead. Later in the interview, he'd reflect on that choice, saying he needs to get out of Miami and there's too many crabs. Back in 2019, Wavy would sign to Quality Control Music, an Atlanta-based record label. Wavy would officially celebrate signing on his 24th birthday, and the following month, Wavy would be gifted a QC diamond chain and pendant. Only five months into his career as a signed artist, Wavy almost lost it all when he was one of five shot in a Miami shootout. May 21st, 2020, shots rang out in the West Little Village neighborhood of Miami. A vehicle would be found eight minutes away in front of the Lemon Peppers restaurant in Brown Sub with two gunshot victims inside. 14 minutes from the shooting scene, a white Mitsubishi with the back window blown out pulled into the front of Jackson Memorial Hospital. Multiple bullet holes could be seen in the back of the vehicle and three men inside were shot, including Wavy. One of the men told police they were shot at when he started firing back. In the months that followed, instead of focusing on the career that could have been major, Wavy dove deeper into the streets, kicking up beef with another Miami rapper who had a violent reputation and was from one of the most notorious hoods in Miami, the Pork and Beans Projects. Fred Rari, the 29-year-old rapper from Liberty City, was booked on a murder charge at only 15 years old. Transferred from Juvie to the Dade County Jail, he'd fight his case for the next 28 months before the murder charge was dropped due to lack of evidence. The main witness in the case, Demetrius Jones, was found to be non-credible after he was arrested for a separate murder. Demetrius Jones would also beat his murder case and both men would be back on the streets of Miami. March 3rd, 2013, Demetrius was walking down 18th Ave as a Nissan Maxima drove by, slowing down as the driver's side rear window lowered and an AK-47 started firing. Demetrius hit the ground as bullets ripped through his body when the shooter and the driver got out of the vehicle, stood over his body, and fired into his face, neck, and chest. The shooters got back into the vehicle before driving off, and a witness at the scene positively identified Fred Rari as one of the shooters. For the second time, Fred Rari was facing a murder charge, and now prosecutors had a motive. Rari had gotten revenge on the main witness in his previous case. Aside from the motive, prosecutors also had a witness named Larry Modest who identified Rari as a shooter and were confident they'd secure a conviction. Larry was shot to death execution style on a street corner in Lil Haiti and Fred Rari would beat his second murder case. 
In November of 2020, pressure would build between Wavy Navy Poo and Fred Rari as the two would publicize their beef, taking it to Instagram. Rari would go live at a corner store on 62nd Street across from the Pork and Beans projects. See where the fuck I'm at, nigga? Huh? Huh? Shortly after, Wavy Navy would go live in front of the same store, dissing Fred and his homies before asking people outside of the store, where Fred at? Where TK at? Where CP3 at? CP3, another Miami rapper from the Pork and Beans Projects and close associate to Fred Rari, would make a video daring Wavy to come back to the store. Yo, put up out to the store, fuck it up. Uh, 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 hey, stop it, tell her come back to the store, man. Flies in that bitch out, nigga. The beef would continue in a series of story posts between the rappers before blood was eventually shed. February 5th, 2021, it was just after 11 a.m. when 26 year old Tokari Harris, a rapper who went by the name 1300 TK, was shot and killed in front of his mother's house. TK was a close associate of Fred Rari and was also from the Pork and Beans Projects. Only days after TK's death, Wavy would drop his song Sliding, with lyrics hinting at murders, shootings, and dissing his ops. The song would have over 900,000 views in only two months, but less than 100 comments and just barely 1,000 likes, leaving many to think QC Media bought views to make their riders look good. Wavy would continue to drop music and in his Back in Blood remix he'd say, Try to catch you at the store, wasn't there you was ghost, probably on the internet like a hoa song. It's believed he was referring to Fred Rari and the back and forth on Instagram lives at the store. By April, Wavy would get his biggest feature when Moneybag Yo jumped on his song Money on My Head, hitting over a million views. Wavy would take the Insta Live dissing dead members from the Pork and Beans projects, including TK, and his music would continue to glorify murder, shootings, and guns, making it hard to believe this was the same man who, as a teen, had a scholarship to play football and admitted to not being in the streets as a jig. News of his death came as no surprise to those who knew the history, and those who were against him were quick to celebrate. Only an hour after Wavy was sprayed in traffic, Fred Rari would take to Instagram with a story post lighting a blunt as his song Lick Back plays in the background. The lyrics saying, I still wear Reeboks, all I do is drop classics. He was talking all that rah rah, got him whacked in traffic. Smoking a new op, that's just one of my bad habits. Now, before everyone says Rari just admitted a murder, this song was dropped three weeks ago and just so happened to fit the mood Rari was in. CP3, who's currently in the Fulton County Jail in Georgia for his alleged involvement in a drive-by shooting with YFN Lucci, would post to his Insta story a screenshot of him on video visitation with a piece of paper reading, Long Live Wavy, and a smile on his face. He then posts to his Instagram a video clip of one of Wavy's songs where Wavy can be heard dissing. Next day, like, the next day, I asked, the next day, the motherfucker was dead. It's obvious to see Wavy's ops couldn't be happier, but these are just his most famous ops, and we don't know who was actually involved in his death until arrests are made. Seeing how quick Wavy dove into the streets at a later age, I wouldn't be surprised if he made a list full of enemies along the way, and knowing he was once an athlete, he most likely felt a chip on his shoulder that he had to go harder in the streets to make up for the time he wasn't even in them. Ultimately, his choice of lifestyle led to his demise. As a teen, he had the opportunity to leave Miami and rejected it. As an adult, he wanted to leave Miami but chose not to. And now, he'll be buried, forever staying in the city he hated to love. Now y'all have been hitting me up to cover this case. I wanted to get as much information as I could before dropping the video and initially hearing the story that he had two kids in the car with him, he got sprayed in traffic and you know, it, it can be shocking. But understanding the backstory of what took place, I'm not surprised the shooters took the opportunity when they got it. They wanted him dead and whether or not he was actually doing shit, he could have been paying people to do shit, whatever it was,
Blood has been shed on both sides, on other sides. People he's been beefing with that we don't even know about. The money's just going to give him more power. And the people that are money hungry around him are going to do whatever he tells them to do. And if he's beefing with people, it's only a matter of time until things come back towards him. And that's exactly what happened. He'd been shot before. And I mean, honestly, the only person you can blame for what took place is him. At the end of the day, you had opportunities to leave where the fuck you were at. You knew it was smarter to do so. But at the same time, listening to his music, I don't think he would have had a career in music for one. I don't think he went that hard. Don't hate on me if you were a fan. I'm just giving my honest opinion. But for two, if you took out all the shooting and killing from his lyrics, I don't think he could have brought anything. I don't think he could have made anything else but that. And I feel that that is a reason why he stayed in Miami. He stayed in the lifestyle because if he moved away from that, what is he going to talk about? You're not doing it. You're not in shootings. People are going to criticize him for that. And I feel that all comes back to he felt he needed to do more in the streets because of the years he wasn't in the streets. Now, doing these videos, I listen to other rappers' music, and I ain't gonna lie, Fred Ryrie, I feel like he could shake something. And I mean, he has a history where he doesn't actively need to do anything, because he's already known for it. Versus on the other end, Wavy Navy Pooh, he didn't have that history that fucked with his credibility. Yeah, he was from the hood. Yeah, he started to get into some shit, but it happened at a later age. And I mean, he literally could have saved his own life had he just left it all behind. But that's just the addiction to the streets, the addiction to the lifestyle. The streets is like a motherfucking drug. Some people are addicted to it. Some people just want it because they like it. And this is what happens. But hey, let me know y'all thoughts and comments in the comment section. It's 1090 Jake. I'm rocking with y'all. Y'all rocking with me. Till next time.